think. Uh, turning to the game I made up, uh, we got a little sidetrack last time when talking about Spawn and Shadowhawk and the thing in the uh, tunnel in Jasper's basement. There was a long discussion about uh, the wagon, which acts as a mobile base of operations and armory, among other things. Uh, but uh, just to recap, uh, th we're in a small New England town called Gloomsbrook. Spawn and Shadowhawk are there. They're trying to get home, but they recognize there's a, a lot of evil going on in this town. We're talking about the evil in the world of Dark Souls 2. Now we're talking about the evil in the world of uh, the game I made up in, in, in Gloomsbrook. So uh, Spawn and Shadowhawk, they're going to they're gonna work on that. But to do a, a really good job, they need to uh, get, out, get out of Blue Gloomsbrook, but they can't because of the poisonous miasma surrounding Gloomsbrook. To get through that, they need a protective amulet from Jasper, but he sells them, and they, they, he sells them. He doesn't just give them away, and they don't have any money. So Jasper has a creature in a tunnel under his house. Uh, uh, he'll give the amulet to Spawn and Shadowhawk if they get rid of the creature for him. Uh, uh, I will say that we uh, we did need that time to talk about the wagon. It's an integral game element. I, I would say, uh, for me, it really ties the whole adventure together. I mean, you can just fit, you can just fit so, so much. You can just fit so much into the wagon. And uh, I recently played a bit of Moonlighter, and that made me realize that Spawn and, and Shadowhawk, uh, they could open their own store with the stuff that they put in the wagon. They could sell stuff out, 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 out of the wagon once they com completed more quests and, and, and made more sort of palpable relationships with, N with NPCs. But that's another thing to consider. We really need to talk about the game's combat tonight. And last time I described it as a mix of a real-time and, and turn-based similar to the Xenoblade games, and that's still the case. But I've added another element, which is the ability to target specific areas on an enemy, similar to the VATS targeting system in the, in the recent uh, Fallout games, with the possible exception of Fallout 76. I don't really know anything about it. I'm guessing nobody, uh, nobody out there does. Uh, so. Uh, Let's get right into the, into the moment that it happens. So the creature reveals itself to spawn and Shadowhawk and says, Oh! Oh! The creature uh, is revealing itself. I'll, I'll just uh, do a delay on the creature slide. Oh! Oh! It's been so long since I've had visitors. Yes, yes, you must please come and sit. Come and lie down. The weight of your days. Oh, the weight of your days. It must be the weight of your days that dragged you down here with me. And then uh, that's what the creature says. Then Spawn says, I don't know what you mean, but we aren't here because we feel bad. Shadowhawk follows up. Do you know Jasper? He's the villager who owns this house. And the creature says, Jasper, yes. He's told me that you would come here. He's added to the weight of your days. Shame. Shame on that man! What did he ask you to do? And then Spawn says, we're supposed to uh, take care of you. He, he didn't specify how, but I have an idea. And then the creature responds, shame on that man and the weight of his days. He means to kill me, to send assassins down, down. What did he offer you? And then Shadowhawk says, an amulet to get us through the woods safely. And the creature responds, rotten man, rotten man, stinking vermin. Did he tell you? how he came to find this tunnel? Did he tell you why he chose this house, this particular house? Did he tell you how he came down here with his runes and his symbols and his flute? Did he tell you how he made me dance to the songs that were written for things that never saw the light of God? He tracked me down like an animal, and he put me in his magic cage. He made me walk between the worlds, break my bones, squeezing into the cracks between life and dreams and nightmares. Out there, out there in the back halls of reality, there are places where even the most uncommon of beings such as myself find it hard to keep their senses. I walked in the dust fields of dead moons. I nearly drowned in rivers that moved like water but felt like skin. I saw the wolf-like visages of dream eaters. They howled at me, and all the light drained from the universe like a suck. 
but he made me go. He made me collect and scrounge like a mouse. He made me bring back those stones and gems he uses in his amulets, the trinkets he sells to lonely housewives and filthy drunkards whose manhood has limped. For years I was his toy, and he laughed at me when I screamed at him in frustration and agony. I was a quiet thing. I had my own songs and my own thoughts, but the endless searching for the treasure made me go mad. I bided my time. I watched his spell casting and I paid attention. I recorded his entrapment rituals like a ledger. One night when he came down to torment me and send me out to walk between the worlds, I lashed out and destroyed the charms that he needed to keep me enthralled. He ran and I chased him, but he got away and he sealed me underneath his house. I lived here once on my own, down here for a long time with quiet thoughts, but when he, when he left me behind his barriers, I was alone again, but my thoughts were loud and obnoxious. I made sure to scream and shake with them as they rattled around in my brain so that he would never sleep soundly again, that the weight of his days would be unbearable with the weight of mine. And then Spawn says, strange. And then Shadowhawk says, why didn't he just leave? And then the creature says, because we are tethered. He and I, inseparable, at least in his, this house. I suppose he knows how to keep me trapped in another house, in another town, or maybe on a ship back to the motherland. Who knows? Maybe he wouldn't be safe at all. My kind are clever. I've proven that to him, at least. I am also insane. Then Spawn says, I guess there's no way that you'll leave him alone. And then Shadowhawk responds, uh, building on that, we just need Jasper's amulet, dude. And then the creature says, very well. May the weight of your days drag you down to hell with me. And then Philip goes, tra-la-la, because he's in the back somewhere. Anyway, so uh, the creature lunges at Spawn and Shadowhawk, knocking down the doorway, trapping everyone inside together. This is important because in the open world, you can almost make any attempt to run away from an enemy encounter. But this one, you can't. You have to fight it. In the combat view, Spawn and Shadowhawk can, can move freely. The smallness of the chamber kind of locks them in. Like, like I said, players can flip between Spawn and Shadowhawk as needed, uh, with the AI kicking in for whoever the, isn't being directly